Hi guys, welcome back to another video of me teaching and today I have the MIT 2025 semi-final number two question four for you guys. So why don't we just get into question? Well, why don't we first look at the integral here and we see that it is a double floor function integral. That sounds hard, right? But actually, once you notice some things, it won't be too hard. So first thing, inside of the floors, all of the logs are all in base two. So you know that if we want to find the answer of that, we must ask to ourselves, what power of two must we raise to get us the number x? Well, we know that x is between zero and one, right? So we know that that number must be a negative. And that is actually a very important information for us. So if you watch some of my previous videos, then you'll probably know what to do. So we first deal with this very internal log. So when the inside of the log is greater than or equal to n and less than n plus 1, then this also means that since this is base 2, then if we raise 2 to the power of all of them, then it will become an expression of x. So we know that x will be greater than or equal to 2 to the n and less than 2 to the n plus 1, right? So since it is like this, then we must know that the floor is m. Okay, so from here, is where we get a very important info. So, because two to the n plus one is the upper bound, right? And in the integral, one is the upper bound. So we must know that two to the n plus one has to be less than or equal to one, right? So from here, we can see that n is less than or equal to negative one. And this is very important to us. And I'll just write it on the side over here. Okay, so now I can rub this out. And now we can change i. So i is equal to, and if you watch some of my previous videos, then you know that we can't just switch the bounds from this to this. We first have to use sigma. So sigma, when m goes from, so when x approaches zero, then we know that m, since m is negative, it is negative infinity. And the top is, of course, just negative 1. And then we have the integral. And then now we can change the bounds. And the inside is the floor of log 2. The inside is x minus 2 to the power of m dx. And now to make things a bit easier, I'm just going to let y to be equal to x minus 2 to the m. So we know that y is going from, if we subtract 2 to the m like this, then it's going from 0 to 2 to the m. Right? So then, if we rewrite this, I'm just going to rub this out. sigma when m equals to negative infinity to negative 1 of the integral. Now it's from 0 to 2 to the m. And the inside is the floor log 2. The inside is now y and dy. So now, of course, we have to use do the same thing we did for that log, but now we do it for this log. So when, instead of using n, I'm going to use n. So when the inside is greater than or equal to n and less than n plus one, this means that, i.e., if we raise to the power of two, y is greater than or equal to two to the n, 
less than 2 to the n plus 1. From here, we see that the floor of this is equal to n. And another very important information is that this 2 to the n plus 1 has to be less than or equal to that. Or n plus 1 is less than or equal to n. So from here, we can see that. So m is less than or equal to negative 1, correct? So n has to be less than or equal to negative 2. And I'm going to rewrite this into m is greater than or equal to n plus 1. So now I'm also going to write this over here. Okay, so now I'm going to rub this out. Okay, so this is equal to, but I'm going to keep this. And then we need another sigma. Now it's n going from, the bottom is the same, negative infinity. But the top is actually not negative 1 anymore. It's actually m minus 1. Because we see this important information, we can find m. I mean, we can find n is m minus 1. So m minus 1. And, sorry that I rubbed it out, but if you remember, the bounds were going from 2 to the n to 2 to the n plus 1. Okay, and the inside is, this is now just n. So n dy. So this is a very easy integral because n is just a constant. So the answer to this integral is just n times y. And if you plug in the bounds yourself, then you see that this will be equal to This will be equal to n times 2 to the n. Okay, so now I'm actually going to try and swap these two sums. Well, how can we do that? Well, we first have to prove for absolute convergence. So how do we do that? Well, we know that n is, of course, less than 1, right? Yes. So, I mean n is less than negative 1. So that means that this 2 to the n is actually just 1 over 2 to the power of something positive. So that means that it is converged. And also, another way is we know that 2 to the n dominates n. So of course, it is an absolute convergence. So then we can swap these two around. So it's equal to sigma n goes from negative infinity to n minus 1. So now we have to solve for this. Well, we see that the inside actually has no m. So it is just a matter of counting now. So how many terms are there between it's actually not negative infinity, but we can also write it as n plus 1. How many terms are there between n plus 1 and negative 1? Well, if you do this in your head, it's negative 1 minus n. So basically, this is just equal to, we have to keep the first sum. And also, I'm going to change this to negative 2 now. But this is basically removed. Just remember, we have to multiply by negative 1 times n. So this is basically what we have. Now we see that there are so many negatives, and we don't like negatives. So to make things easier, I'm just going to let k to be uh, negative n. So we know that k is equal to 2, 3, all the way to infinity. So this sum becomes the sum from k goes from 2 to infinity of k minus 1 and then times 
negative k, and we can take the negative outside. So just times k, and then times 2 to the negative k, or 1 half to the power of k. Okay, so if when you look at the inside, k times k minus 1 times something, what does that make you remind? Well, that reminds me of, well, that reminds me of the second derivative. How? Well, why don't we do just do a little test drive? So if we just have a sum when k goes from 0 to infinity of r to the power of k. Now, this is a power series. So when r is less than 1, which it is right now, then this is equal to, if you use the GP formula, 1 over 1 minus r. So if we try and take the first derivative, then we know that sigma k goes from now not 0, but 1, because the first term will be eliminated by the derivative, and the inside is k times r to the k minus 1, is equal to, if you use basic product slash quotient rule, then this is equal to 1 over 1 minus r squared. And then if we take another derivative, then this will be sigma when k goes from 2 to infinity now of k times k minus 1 times r to the k minus 2 is equal to, if you use product rule again, then you'll see that we have to multiply by an extra 2. So 2, 1 minus r cubed. Okay, so now if we multiply an r squared on this side and that side, because this yet does not match, because this is k and that's k minus 2, if we multiply a r squared on both sides, then we see that this just becomes r to the k, and this is r squared. So now we can use this formula and plug it into here. So this is equal to negative. Well, in our case, r is 1 over 2. So 2 times 1 fourth, right? Because 1 half squared is 1 over 4. Then 1 minus 1 over 2 is just 1 over 2. So 1 over 2 cubed equals negative. This is 1 over 2. And this is 1 over 8. And this is just negative 4. So this is the final answer of the MIT 2025 semifinal number 2 question 4. So thank you guys so much for watching. And if you enjoy my video and you want more videos like this, please consider liking and subscribing. If you want to master something, teach it.